Will we ever go to the movies again? To borrow and slightly amend a catchphrase of cinema's most famous blockbuster assassin, they'll be back. Be assured that yes, one day, the movie theaters will reopen, and the films whose premieres were affected by the coronavirus pandemic will eventually find their way to the big screen. Welcome back to Film Shack. Today, we prepared for you a list of movies that will be in theaters this summer. The Personal History of David Copperfield I'm David Copperfield. I'm your nephew. You're the only family I have. A fresh and distinctive take on Charles Dickens' semi-autobiographical masterpiece, The Personal History of David Copperfield, set in the 1840s, chronicles the life of its iconic title character as he navigates a chaotic world to find his elusive place within it from his unhappy childhood to the discovery of his gift as a storyteller and writer. David's journey is by turns hilarious and tragic, but always full of life, color, and humanity. It's easy to fall for a period piece that stars Dev Patel as Charles Dickens' favorite character, David Copperfield. But what makes this costume comedy even more alluring is the fact that it's scripted by Simon Blackwell, one of the writers of Veep, Four Lions, and In the Loop, and directed by Armano Iannucci helmer of the aforementioned Laugh Riot, as well as the death of Stalin. Oh, and Tilda Swinton co-stars. Alas, we'll have to wait another several weeks. This one's on hiatus too. In theaters on a date, TBD. Tenet. That test you passed? Not everybody does. Welcome to the afterlife. Armed with only one word, Tenet and fighting for the survival of the entire world. The protagonist journeys through a twilight world of international espionage on a mission that will unfold in something beyond real time. Christopher Nolan's top secret thriller starring Robert Pattinson, John David Washington, and Elizabeth Debicki might become the first movie to get a proper wide release in theaters in the COVID-19 era. That seems to be Nolan's hope, as he is made trying to preserve the theatrical experience one of his admirable lifelong goals. And certainly, if any movie might get wary theatergoers into auditoriums after, you know, all this, Tenet may well be the one. But that also makes the film most likely to get postponed to next year if everything continues to be totally screwed. In theaters July 17th. Mulan. Loyal, brave, and true. Quarantine dealt a real body blow to Disney's latest live action adaptation of an animated standard which was set to be released right as the country started shutting down. The film, originally scheduled to reach theaters on March 27th, actually got as far as having a glitzy premiere on March 9th, screening for a Hollywood theater full of people who couldn't have known how soon afterward normalcy would disappear. Directed by Nikki Caro, the new Mulan takes a more realistic approach to the folklore legend, dropping the musical numbers and upping the action. It's a film that was assembled with a lot of thought to the international market, with Chinese star Liu Yifei in the title role, supported by an array of talent that includes Donnie Yen, Di Ma, Jet Li, and Gong Li as a fabulous-looking shape-shifting witch. That also means its commitment to its current July release date will probably be as contingent on the resumption of regular movie-going in China as in the US, in theaters July 24th. The SpongeBob Movie, Sponge on the Run. Hello. <laughs> Call me Sage. Good name. I'm made out of Sage and I am a Sage, so it works out pretty well. The SpongeBob movie, Sponge Out of Water, was one of 2015's most delightful surprises, a lively, witty blend of kid-friendly gags and stoner humor. Set before the events of the television series, SpongeBob goes on a trip to Camp Coral and meets some new friends. However, when his pet snail Gary gets kidnapped by Poseidon and taken to the lost city of Atlantic City, he and his new best friend Patrick must go on a rescue mission to save him from the dastardly plan of Poseidon before it's too late. The movie will also reveal the first time our beloved characters as kids met at camp, a magical moment that brings meaning to the power of true friendship. This latest SpongeBob movie promises all 3D animated versions of the characters. They were only partly 3D last time, which may or may not be slightly creepy and weird. But if any series can pull off slightly creepy and weird while also remaining fun and playful, it's this one. In theaters, August 7th. Sound of Metal. A bleached blonde Riz Ahmed is superb as Ruben, a drummer whose music career, personal life, and sense of self all implode when he starts to experience hearing loss while on tour with his bandmates and girlfriend Lou, 
Olivia Cook. Darius Martyr's film begins as a frustrating portrait of a man in denial about his disability, reluctant to learn sign, hostile to members of the supportive deaf community he's allowed to join, and focused only on the idea that his life can be restored as it used to be. But the sound of metal slowly deepens to reveal itself to be an insightful drama about addiction, recovery, and coping mechanisms, filling in details about Ruben's history that make his behavior understandable, and using rich sound design to put us inside his experiences. In theaters August 14, Wonder Woman, 1984. Welcome to the future. Life is good, but it can be better. Patty Jenkins' sequel to her gargantuan 2016 hit promises all sorts of funky 80s style and music and action spectacle after the World War I set original. Let's just hope we ourselves don't have to travel through time to see it. It's already moved once, but Warner Brothers can't afford to do VOD numbers on this, so if the world isn't ready to open up come August, this will likely move again. Not necessarily a sequel, but rather a subsequent chapter, Wonder Woman 1984 honors its title and rocks the fashion signature of the decade, color blocking neon and all. With Gal Gadot's Diana Prince heading to America and coming face to face with two new foes, the Cheetah, played by Kristen Wiig, and Max Lord, played by The Mandalorian's Pedro Pascal. Luckily, after a date-hopping winter, the film has found its premiere in mid-August. In theaters, August 14th, Bill and Ted face the music. Why can't we just go to the future when we have written it? Whoa! It's been almost three decades since the lovable doofuses played by Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves dueled with death for their souls over a game of Battleship. A hefty amount of time, even in an era which audiences didn't blink an eye at Triple X's follow-up, a mere 12 years after the last one, and a third Bad Boys installment, a cool 17 years in coming. But on screen at least, nothing dies anymore. It just gets returned to, reimagined, or rebooted. For Bill and Ted, this new outing seems to be a way of engaging with the malaise of middle age, with the characters getting tasked to save the world with a song, and the help of, of course, some famous figures. Dean Pariseau of Galaxy Quest is directing, while Chris Matheson and Ed Solomon, who wrote the first two films, are handling the script. And this is one title that seems entirely capable of handling additional delays. If it comes to that, when your film is this long and coming, what's a few more months? In theaters August 21st. The New Mutants. You're not alone. Not anymore. Do you know what mutants are? If the promised release of the New Mutants is anything less than the final harbinger of the apocalypse at this point, it'll feel anticlimactic. Originally slated to come out in April 2018, the superhero horror movie was bumped to early 2019, with talk of reshoots to make it scarier. Then it was delayed again, and again, and somewhere in there, Fox was acquired by Disney and the coronavirus happened. And now, here we are with the movie, which stars Maisie Williams, Anya Taylor-Joy, Charlie Heaton, Alice Braga, Blue Hunt, and Henry Zaga as teen mutants being held in a secret facility, in something close to its original form. But when a movie already has so much history under its belt, why not keep waiting? If it's held for long enough, the new mutants could come out in a world that's eventually moved on from superhero movies to some other genre entirely. In theaters August 28th. A Quiet Place Part 2. Can John Krasinski make lightning strike twice? Some may be skeptical about the follow-up to the 2018 hit, set in a world where monsters hunt by sound, and humans have to remain deathly silent in order to stay alive. But then again, who had John Krasinski makes a horror film for the ages on their 2018 bingo card either? Not technically a summer movie originally, the John Krasinski Emily Blunt horror sequel was slated for a late winter release but Paramount announced it would be moving the anticipated thriller to Labor Day, which would be a box office blessing in disguise, as September is the month when award season kicks into full gear. Let's not underestimate the man, and let's definitely not underestimate returning stars Emily Blunt and a young Millicent Simmons, who are joined this time around by Cillian Murphy, who in retrospect seems like he should have been in this thing all along, in theaters September 4th. Peninsula Train to Busan director Yan Song-ho 
made an animated prequel to accompany his brutally entertaining zombie apocalypse phenomenon when it came out in 2016. Soul Station was, if you can believe it, even more bleak than its live-action companion, surveying the spreading undead pandemic from the perspective of a young runaway and the two men searching for her as panic escalates. Now, Yon's made a follow-up to Train to Busan, though given the high body counts and low survival rates in this series, it should be unsurprising to learn that it picks up with new characters. Set four years after the events of the first two films, Peninsula takes place in a decimated South Korea in which there are few survivors, with Gong Dong Wan as a soldier assigned to take on the retrieval mission that, given the genre, probably goes terribly wrong. In theaters on a date TBD. Spiral from the Book of Saul. Whoever did this has another motive. They're targeting cops. Working in the shadow of an esteemed police veteran, Samuel L. Jackson, brash detective Ezekiel Zeke Banks, Chris Rock, and his rookie partner Max Mangella take charge of a grisly investigation into murders that are eerily reminiscent of the city's gruesome past. Unwittingly entrapped in a deepening mystery, Zeke finds himself at the center of the killer's morbid game. This is the ninth installment in a franchise everyone thought was done after the trilogy. The helmer of Saw 2 and 3, Darren Lynn Boozman, who worked closely with the original Saw masterminds James Wan and Lee Wannell, is back in the director's chair, with actors Chris Rock, Max Minghella, and Samuel L. Jackson reawakening the saga. A bloody game of balancing the scales of justice from the mind of Rock who's also an executive producer. It too has an undetermined release date, in theaters on a date TBD. We would like you to share your opinion with us. Are you excited to see movies from our list? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications bell. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.